How's it going guys? Welcome again. My name is Alex Pizarro. If you are new to my channel, I do a lot of gear reviews. I talk about filmmaking news, um, anything related to the world of videography. So, on my last video, I talked about the firmware update of 1.10 and also about the overheating test that I currently have done. Now, we're going to do three things to talk about today. First, not most, is going to be the IBIS on this camera. Second, we're going to talk about the low light ISO performance. And then, third, we're going to talk about the the time of getting it restored after it has overheated, how much more time you get. So let's go ahead and talk about the first thing, which is IBIS. Now the R6 has the best IBIS that so far any mirrorless camera has obtained, in my opinion. Um, it's really, really good. Um, that's one of the great features I was able to test out. Now I did it in handheld, and I also did one with a Ronin S uh, electronic gimbal. Uh, I've made two videos of these so you guys can go ahead and see that comparison right here. Um, so you guys make the judgment of which one you will go with, handheld or gimbal. Anyways, with that being said, that's basically the test I did uh, for the IBIS. Now I'm going to do tests for the low light performance. For the low light performance, I was able just to put a lens right in front of it and just going to play with the ISO. So first we start with ISO 100, then we go to 200, 300, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, cranking it all the way up to 10,000, 12,600, 16,500, 20,000, all the way up to 25,600 which is its maximum but this is the wonderful thing about it I mean you may notice a little bit of noise however the most comfortable ice ISO, uh, ISO with a shutter speed of 1 of 100 at f4 with uh, 4k I feel comfortable recording at least um, between 3200 and 6400 so I mean the, the ISO performance is really really good now compare that to my Canon SL2 it's a huge difference uh, I mean 3200 you still see a lot of noise on my Canon SL2 crack it up to 6400 it's it's a lot of noise however on the R6 because it has a 20 megapixel uh, sensor it really does an amazing job in low light this is perfect and this is perfect for the type of work that I do the other thing is which is called the I call it the recovery time the recovery time is very 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 crucial now I've taken the R6 today outside uh, with a 90 to 92 degree weather here in Utah um, and it I mean at 27 minutes still has the overheat um, warning it does come up however uh, the camera itself like the body still feel as warm as I felt it inside room temperature so that either that either is something going on with the firmware or you know or software capabilities that have been put by Canon but this can be easily resolved the extended times here could be easily resolved now version 1.10 on the R6 has improved the recovery times, uh, I think, personally. Um, however, I we still like to see another firmware update that will help us increase that recording time at 4K60. Also, you know, just make sure that the time is more extended with recovery. So here are my results so far. R6 can record uh, 4K60 for up to 30, 30 minutes and 31 seconds. Once it shuts off, I waited 15 minutes. Turn it back on. 4K60 gave me 15 minutes additional recording time. Turn it off. Waited an additional 10 more minutes. Add those up. It gives you 25 minutes. Later, turn it back on. 
4K 60 came back at 25 minutes of restored time. So what about 4K at 30? So those times have been reset back to 25 minutes, oddly enough, and 4K 24 at 29.59 after that 25 minute cooldown. So again, these have been my tests that I've done on the R6. Um, I, if you guys have your R6 or those watching that have it, let me know what your results are. Um, I just want to see if they're about the same or they're different. But this is definitely interesting because the recovery time is not like the R5 once was with the version 1.0, which basically uh, it was what a, a few hours for for I, I'm hearing a few hours at least of restore time. You know, this definitely actually is a software limitation uh, that's preventing from the R6 to cool down um, around these times, but. If a software update comes in at 1.2 or maybe 1.12, who knows, then we hope that Canon can definitely shorten those re uh, recovery times. Again, you know, I, I put out a lot of tests with the R6. Uh, I put it through everything I could. And I am so happy that that I have this camera because this is a big upgrade from my current crop sensor to a full frame mirrorless and I want this camera to be the camera I'm going to stick with for a very very long time but so far with with how much I can record and for what I can do it seems like this is the camera I'm definitely going to keep and I'm very happy to say that I'm not going to return it uh, this is something that I know Canon can give push out a firmware update where this can be easily resolved and they can extend the time of recording um, so but I I'm glad I'm doing these tests for you guys and I appreciate you guys like and support um, subscribe to my channel because there will be more coming more tests coming but let me ask you guys this what do you want me to test on the R6? Leave that comment down below and I'll be sure to look over it and I'll write down on the list to make sure to see if I can test it out. Um, but however, there will be some real world work that I'm gonna do on the on a Saturday or on the weekend that I'm gonna be able to present you guys with and let you guys know if it is the right camera for you guys. You guys have supported my channel so far. I'm excited to reach 1,000 subscribers. Um, that's my goal. So with your guys' help watching, I hope you guys can make that happen. Um, there will be a giveaway of a lens coming up as well on the next video. That announcement will come up. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Well, guys, stay creative out there. And stay create some real awesome content with your camera. We'll catch you guys in the next one.